guys, uh, it's Chris, and in this episode of Sample Market Producer Tips and Tricks, we're going to have a look on how to generate chord stops starting from a pad loop. So the sounds that I'm going to use in this episode are coming from two libraries that I had the pleasure to work on for Sample Market. These two pads are coming from the Experimental Electro Sample Pack whereas this drum loop and this synth loop are coming from the recently released old school tech house library. Obviously you can find both libraries on the website. So let's dive into the tutorial. Uh, a starting point, we have these two loops, a pad and a synth loop. And I'm going to generate um, chord stops out of this pad loop. So what I'm going to do is to create a new MIDI track. I'm going to drag the pad loop in. I'm going to convert simpler to sampler. And I'm going to create a new MIDI track. First of all, let, let's hear how the pattern it could be and where we want the chord stops. Okay, so I think this could work. I'm gonna copy and paste this. So how can we generate chord stops out of this? What we can do is to go on the modulation page of the sampler, activate a new LFO and select the sample and hold one. Reduce the frequency to 0.03 to have a very subtle modulation and I'm going to select the sample offset and increase the value to the maximum. So what is the sample offset? Sample offset is the starting point of the sample. So each time then that I'm going to press the note, the sample is going to have a new starting point, as you can see. So this adds a bit of variation. How can I modulate things further and more? What I can do is create a new LFO modulation that this time is going to affect the filter frequency. So I'm going to increase also the width a bit to create a bit of stereo field and maybe have a bit of offset as I could also modulate the filter resonance. Let's see how things are sounding now. Surely not repetitive. That's what exactly what we wanted. Let's increase a bit of uh, soft distortion. And uh, let's add a delay. We should add the magnetic one. As... This is an, an emulation of some tape delays from the 80s, which works really nicely uh, with uh, the chord stops, in my opinion. Let's use 201 really old. Let's see how it's sounding. Nice. Uh, let's try to play the loops as things are now. Okay. Let's bring the filter frequency modulation a little bit down as I can hear that sometimes it is playing with a very close filter, which is something that I don't want. You can also uh, modulate actually the filter in a more nice way. Let's see if it, this works using the morph function. So what we can do is to uh, select the filter morph function here. 
Increase this to the maximum and let's see how things are sounding now. Definitely better, I reckon. Nice. So, um, I think this is a really nice uh, starting point. If sometimes it happens to go really quiet, this is personally something that I don't mind, but what is possible always is to record the sound from the channel and then chop the hits that you like the most. In this way, uh, the sound is far from being repetitive, which is something that I really like. So let's have uh, a drum loop that I think it could fit nicely into the context. Something that I tend to do when I write a new tune is that I have these chord stops being one really close to uh, being really close one to another. So what I would do is just maybe use them one every two bar. I think is definitely more effective. And yeah, here I have a three or three note pattern that I thought would complement the loop real nice. Real nice. Um, so, this is it for today. And I hope you found this tutorial helpful. And I hope to see you into the next one. Cheers, guys.